Black City, Black City. We here again in Black City. And today we're gonna explore some of the mythical beings of Black City, Black City. There were giants in Black City. Big black giants in Black City. Their skin was black as charcoal and tar mixed together. They glistened in the sun. These giants were strange creatures. They were powerful beings. You could smell them. They had a very strange smell. It was a combination of gasoline, flowers, and water. Now these giants didn't hurt anybody, but they were furious creatures. These giants were only seen during very terrible storms and hurricanes. They came out from the deep waters of the lakes of Black City. No one knew why they were there. One morning, a young lady by the name of Termery. Young Termery was a dancer. And she likes to dance in the rain. So it was raining for two days straight in Black City. Till Mary was in her glee. She came out every morning and she danced for hours until it was time for her to do her reading. On the third day when she came out to dance, things were a bit strange. Even though it was raining, it was quiet. Usually during the rain, there would be kids playing there would be animals fluttering around, but even though the raindrops were hitting the surface of the ground, there, was, there seemed to be nothing moving, nothing happening. This didn't stop her, Mary. She went on dancing and twirling and flipping. She had her music blasting, and everything was lovely. Her mom and dad were inside, Mom was watching her favorite soap opera, and her daddy was in the shed working on his car. To Mary, dance and dance away. Wagow! Thunderstruck. To Mary got a little bit scared, but at the same time, a little bit excited. She kept dancing. The, the, the thought of danger gave her a new sense of freedom. It took her mind into a new zone that she was out there in the danger of dancing and she felt free and amazing. Then she started hearing the rumbling. These weren't sudden cracks of thunder. These were low frequency rumbling. On closer listening, it sounded like a growl, a slow, low growl. Well, she started to hear where this growl was coming from. So she stopped dancing and started slowly creeping towards the sound. <laughs> Completely curious, with no care for her safety, till Mary started walking deeper and deeper into the nearby forest. Her family lived on the edge of a forest. They had a huge amount of land. And this forest had a big lake, a huge lake. Every summer, all the kids would go there and play and fish. Nobody could really pinpoint the exact name of this lake. Some call it Thunder Lake. Some call it Giant Lake. And the old, old heads call it Snake Lake. Deep in the lake, were strange creatures that the ancients spoke about. Today, Tim Mary was gonna come face to face with a group of these creatures. As she break through the clearing, she could see the lake and she could hear the rumbling coming from deep inside the lake. Even though a little bit nervous, she was not scared and she was not Afraid, a brave young girl to marry. But 
too brave for her own good. As she got closer to the lake, she started noticing that there were some shadows right beneath the surface of the water. These shadows were moving very slowly and dynamically. She couldn't notice what type of creatures they were. Some part of her knew that they were intelligent and humanoid. These creatures were large. The shadows in the lake were big. And Tur Mary decided, maybe in a trance, to enter into the cold water of Snake Lake. As she put her first foot in, all of the noise of the rain stopped. Her visual changed suddenly. It was now a very sunny and bright day, but the landscape had changed. All of the houses were gone. All of the trees were now huge, stretching miles into the sky. Three, four, some trees were even eight miles. And on these trees, she could see movement. These were structures. There were creatures and people living in these huge trees. And below the trees, they seemed to be these, these, these militant, huge, giant black creatures. They seemed to be running very quickly and darting from side to side. As she looked closer, she could see that there were these little red beings trying to get up the trees. And these giants were stopping and impeding their every attempt. Up on the trees, there were these birds. Songbirds, they were bright yellow and pink. They had big heads and huge feathers that were all different colors on the comb of their head. These birds were singing a lovely song and the black giant seemed to be moving in rhythm with these, these songbirds' music. The people of the city rejoiced. The giants all stood still with the exception of a little sway and movement for the music as no more of these red beings were seen. And as the evening came to a close, everybody in these tree cities came down to the ground and started having a big feast. And all of a sudden she was back at the lake and it was raining and she could no longer see these dark figures moving beneath the waters. And her father called out, Mary, Mary, what are you doing? Get away from the lake. Mary couldn't move. For three days, she was in a catatonic state. When they tried asking Mary what happened, she couldn't speak. For years, Mary didn't speak. And then she started dancing again. But this time, Mary did a rain dance. Every time to Mary would dance, it would start raining. And the longer she would dance, the more the rain would fall. And the more there would be thunder and lightning. And floods came to Black City. Until Tur Mary had to be locked away, away from any music, chained up so she couldn't move and create any rhythm and cause any more terror in Black City, Black City.